Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today's session. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about ThingWorks Navigate and EAC productivity apps and how they allow you to get better access to your data. Now, this is a topic that I'm, I'm really pretty excited to show. Um, every time people look at this and the software and the applications we're about to show you, um, they kind of lose their minds just a little bit. Um, it's kind of a, a entire shift in how people can get at data and allow different roles and, and things throughout their organization, access product information as, as products are moving from idea um, all the way through sunsetting. So my name is Anthony Byrell. I'm the marketing manager here at EAC Product Development Solutions. Uh, today's demonstration and presentation will be delivered by Todd Kraft. He is a technical account manager, all around good guy, and uh, very knowledgeable person when it comes to the entire PTC software suite, and that includes ThingWorks Navigate and the EAC productivity apps that leverage ThingWorks Navigate. So I'm going to do a brief introduction for those of you who may not know who EAC is, and then I'll pass things over to him, and he can take it away. So EAC is, as our name implies, a product development solutions company that's dedicated to transforming the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. Now, this takes a lot of different forms. It may be simply providing the right software solutions and design solutions um, to help people really take advantage of the ideas in their head and get their products to market and to a manufacturer quickly. Um, it may come down to how people monitor and, and structure and plan their manufacturing. Or it may come down to how they pass design information all the way through service and actually leverage configurations and various part information and tie it into ERP systems and other systems to make sure that the service experience they're delivering to their customers, um, to use a term from business books, delights the customer. Um, there are many things we can do. We are a a platinum partner with PTC, so we provide solutions such as Creo, Windchill, ThingWorks, ArborText, um, the various um, SLM is what they call it, solutions, and others. Um, we are a partner with ANSYS, providing their top tier simulation tools and other various products that um, allow our customers to really bring the best possible product to market as fast as possible. And then we're also the commercial partner for Formlabs 3D printers. Um, so after today, and you see the EAC apps and ThingWorks Navigate, uh, just know that we can really address any of the concerns or issues you have with regards to how you design products, manufacture them, get them to market, and service them. So keep us in mind anytime you have any needs in those areas. Now, before I pass things over to Todd, I do want to bring up some of our upcoming webinars. Um, we have a very full calendar and more webinars are showing up every day. Uh, today, we're talking about the apps. On Monday, we're going to have a presentation around piping and cabling, um, how to optimize that design process with a, a really slick extension uh, for the Creo CAD software. Um, we'll also be talking about effective change management across the product lifecycle which is something that is probably of interest to all the people on today's webinar. Um, and then we're going to have a few around um, simulation and CFD with Creo, as well as multi-physics simulations with a tool called ANSYS Discovery Live. So if any of those are of interest to you or might be of interest to your peers, please pass them on. Todd, that is all I had. Would you like to wow us with today's presentation? I will try. Thank you, Anthony. I, I, I think you will do more than try. Here, let me pass it over to you. I'll let you know when I have your screen. We got it. Take it away, sir. All right. Thanks, Anthony. Well, today's presentation, I'll just go ahead and go through a few slides, and then I'll show the apps live. So first, uh, one of the key things about the productivity apps is achieving better decisions. You know, we shouldn't keep our products, uh, product data in a company a secret. So there's been some data out there saying that about 0.5% of the data we create is, is, is only, is ever analyzed and used. If you can increase that by 10%, that will result in more than 65 million additional net income for a typical Fortune 1000 company. So that's the key thing today is getting data to the people that need it. 
the current challenge today is that usually when it comes to the data that's being created in companies, um, usually the author is the one who typically uses that data. And those who want to use that data on the right side there, the tooling designer, the purchasing quality, they tend to have a very difficult way of getting that data. So the authors, the designers or engineers in this case, they become a little bit of a bottleneck because they, if they're not available, if they're too busy, and plus they'd rather just like to design. Um, we want to really be able to break that wall down and let the people on the right side get the data. So that's where the ThingWorks Navigate solution comes in. And we're going to talk about the EAC productivity apps that are built on this technology, really to get the data to the people on the right through a very simple interface, not using the complex PLM system or ERP system, trying to get that data over to them, okay, so that they can make better decisions and get the information they need to do, to do their job. So Navigate is purpose-built. It's uh, built for a role to complete a task, and it's getting you just the information that you need. It's getting the information that's real-time from your PLM system, and it's very easy to consume, no need for training, just a simple little app. There's no need for a windshield upgrade. It's easy to deploy. It's ready out of the box. Very simple tailoring that I'll show you as well. Increasing your efficiency and reducing costs. So that's where we're going to talk about the EAC apps for Windchill. There are currently four of them, and we're going to go through all those today. Um, just a quick thing on the subscription pricing. Um, we made it very simple for pricing. We have basically a price based on number of users on the on the left side there, and <clears throat> the difference in the two different tiers then are if you're gonna be just a view and print type of user, or if you're going to be a view, edit, and author type of user, okay? This gives you access to all the EAC productivity apps. It also gives you access to the EAC productivity home as well. So um, this is a very simple pricing, pricing uh, model, and um, we're gonna now talk about what the apps are. This is the apps on the right side. There's four of them currently, quick access, BOM report, PLM report, and part association. And Todd, data. we've actually just added another one. This is a good point to bring up because if someone does decide to purchase EAC productivity apps, you get the apps as our developers are coming out with them. We have a new one mm -hmm. called Quick Search that's out there too. Um, and we're just rolling out documentation for that. So. Exciting stuff awesome. happening in this space. Yes, and and we are always, we have developers on staff, we're always looking for new ideas. Um, and really the goal of the apps are really to, to promote adoption, to give you a better investment uh, return in your windshield system, to extend visibility to the relevant information, and really to also grab information from other systems, ERP, CRM, QMS, to give you one dashboard, one simple place to collaborate. And then just really overall, just to, to realize the promise of PLM. So uh, for a demonstration, let's go ahead and just bring up our favorite web browser. We're gonna do just a, um, I'm using Chrome in this case. Here's our four uh, EAC productivity apps. Let's just go from left to right. Uh, you have the pencil up here as well. That's for tailoring, which I'll show you here soon as well. So you're gonna log into this just like you would log into Windchill. The same things you see in Windchill are the same things you see in the productivity app. Go to quick search. And in this case, we can look at products. We can actually search by product that's in our system, or we can just do as a search term. So let's go ahead and grab a drive system and let's just grab a, let's do a quick search. And what this is going to do, it's going to, you see it right below the search term, it's gonna find parts, EPM, like documents or parts, or, CREO, or um, uh, CAD files. It's also gonna find documents. And you can uncheck those if you wish to, or check them. That's some kind of on the fly tailoring you can do. So if you wanna be very specific, maybe you might find a number, a huge number of searches on a, on a search term, you can go ahead and check those boxes right away. 
Notice it found a windshield part, it found a few CAD documents and also some documents too. If I just single click on one of these, I can see the, the assembly here. I can also download an IGES or STEP file of that as well. That's built right in because those are published uh, items that are associated with that object. If I click on a drawing, I can look at a, a PDF file and download that. Again, that's probably what somebody in purchasing might want to get. They can get that really quickly just by this uh, this dialog box right here. I can also multi-select and I'll get all three of those. Okay, that's a nice little option here. So one thing I love about our apps as well is if at any time if I want to just double click on an assembly, that always will take me to the actual windshell page where that's located. Okay, and if I go to related objects here, I can see I have uh, some drawings here and so forth. So I could, if I know windshield, I can navigate around. I can I can go to the changes page, history page, you know. So wherever you are inside of our apps, whatever app you're in, you can always double click and it'll actually take you right to the spot where that file is located inside of windshield. Here's my uh, document as well. Right, work, it'll open up right in Word here. Okay, so that's a, the quick search app. Now the quick access app is the next one, it really is created to provide an improved user interface. Okay, so, and by extension, really user productivity, you know, for shop floor people, um, the, anyone that requires streamlined access to critical and really select data sets. Okay, so it really helps adoption. Um, is the main thing here. So let's go ahead and just pick on, uh, let's pick on a, a product again. You can, it's optional. You can choose an end item as well if you wish to. In this case, we'll click on the, the search box and we'll find a bill of material. Now, just to navigate around here from, from left to right on the top here, if I pick on that top level assembly, I'm shown an image of that. I'm also shown on the bottom, I'm shown uh, markups and related documents that are part of that item. So it's always active. So whatever I pick on the top, that will activate down here on the bottom. I can go to, I can see there's a markup available. If I say view in Creo, uh, view, that'll pop up for me. I can download these documents on the fly. Those are, those are described by documents. I can go to a problem report, I can find out. And if I double click on these, it takes me right to the problem report inside of Windchill. These are all active links. Change requests, change notices and variances. Now on the right side, I'm given the image. I've also can go to the drawings as well. I can go and look at different drawings of this item. I have different representations as well, simplified reps. I can also download a PDF here as well, okay? And on the top here, we have a structure. We could also do a where used. So we got we can toggle those back and forth on the top there. And if you notice also on the right side, we have a link to external data. So in this case, it can actually connect to an ERP system or MRP system and actually get quantity on in stock and a cost information. The fact Notice that, that I... costing information can get pulled into a view like this is huge. Most roles that would need both of those pieces of information would be jumping between enterprise systems, um, possibly only have visibility to one and need to talk to another group. Uh, so what this, this role-based app, what Quick Access does is really allow um, people to get all the information they need to do their job, many jobs, in one place. And I'd like to point out, Todd, like the tabs that you went across on the bottom, if you were working in a P PDM or PLM solution, um, that would information would kind of be cast across all different areas of the tool. So consolidating it into one, one view that's not intimidating at all um, really improves user experience. So this is a cool app. Yes. Yeah. For some companies, this one screen might require four different applications to get this data. 
and here we're presenting it to a user in one spot. Um, and then if you wanted to become an author here, again, maybe you want to give some, some feedback to engineering or design when out on, the, on the shop floor, you find a, a problem. Here you can click on new problem report, and here you can go ahead and generate a problem report. Um, very similar to how you do a problem report inside of Windchill, same options, but presented to the user in a very simple way, easily to adopt and, and, and make, make work. And there's new change request, and then there's also a new variance. All right, so I think I went through all the options on the screen. Um, you also have a view in Creo. I can open it up right inside of Creo. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and, and I, and I remember before um, I said that every, everywhere you click, you can go ahead and just double click and it opens that inside of Windshield. I love that option. This is the timing chain, related documents, CAD structure, there we go. Okay, so let's go back to here. Let's go to the next app on the list. We'll go to Bill of Material Report, some of the, the foundation of where this comes from. It's really giving somebody a, a visual representation and a, really a detailed listing of the current status of an end item or a product. So you can go ahead and choose, <clears throat> let's choose a drive system again. And this one, the same, the same item we've been kind of working with here. Click on the search, and here we have uh, the bill of material presented to us. So this is, you can consider this like a progress of the bill of material. You can find, find out which parts are not released yet, uh, which parts have been created, modified by. This is a pretty smart page too. You can actually drag um, columns around if you want to, or sort it differently, okay? That's easy to do. And on the top here, you have an export button. I can export this bill of material. It makes a CSV file. I'll open that and that opens right inside of Excel for me. Okay, all the columns that are displayed are presented to you here. And it's worth noting that that is real information. That is pulling live information from the PLM solution. It, it's not copying it over to Navigate or anything. This is a, a simplified, very nice view into the bill of materials that's housed in your PLM tool. On the bottom, you see you have a, a pie chart that shows you uh, which items are in work, which ones are released. Okay, so if you, if you want it to be all released, you'd want to see an entire green circle. So the greener here, the, the more progress you're making on your bill of material. We also have a price roll up here, our cost roll up where it's taken, doing some math here in the background and taking the, the cost attributes of the items and putting those into a little cost roll up. Let's talk a little bit about tailoring here a little bit. I'm gonna pick on the pencil here on the bill of material report. If you notice also, we have um, different groups you can tailor it to. So, so if I'm gonna make some changes, I could make the changes just for the purchasing group. So when you log in on your purchasing role, you're gonna see this change when you come back in. And again, you have item, do I wanna search on latest, iteration or version? Um, what are the search criteria? Do I wanna use end items or not? Okay, I can filter by assembly or part. Um, I can also uh, put in some different parameters here and for how to display the fields. If I want a bar graph, let's go ahead and change it, change it to bar. That's an easy one to, to see the change right away. And there's some additional options too. And again, as a user of our, our productivity apps, we might make some changes here to the tailoring. And again, those changes all get pushed out to all the users whenever those changes are made. Let's go ahead and save the, the changes here. It's successfully saved. Let's go back to the app. This time, let's just type in like a, a search word, valve star, let's grab this exhaust valve. Just double click on that. Now we get a bar graph on the bottom. Again, the in work is a little bit higher than the green there and the released. Okay, and I can I can make my graph reflect state or modified by and see who's doing the most work on this uh, assembly in this case. And again, in this app, I just say double, I double click on this item right here and it takes you right into windshield where the item is. 
Okay. The last one we're going to go through is the part associations. The part associations is, you can kind of think of it as a shortcut uh, to all the, I guess for, for all the non-mainstream windshield users uh, and shop floor personnel to really access any CAD files or documentation, anything associated, associated with the part data. You can easily see CAD files, part data, or drawings. I'm gonna type in just a, a company name here, just type in EAC. And we can, once we type in EAC, we have a couple of, um, of results. And if we pick on this top result, here we can see all the described by documents associated with that item, the CAD documents, and um, a CAD assembly. So we have two, uh, two documents and three CAD documents here. So really quick, just I want to see everything associated with it. And this might be a gigantic list um, or a small list in this case. Pick on this one. I have just a assembly right there. And this, this is all live. Again, this could have been checked in uh, five minutes ago. Here's the most accurate or current step file available to people. So I think that's where I want to end it. Um, I'm going to go back to here. These are the EAC productivity apps. Again, if I go back to this page again, really meant to be uh, really to help you to adopt and get a better return on investment for windshield um, and really realize the promise of PLM. So we have time for questions. If anybody has any questions typed in, otherwise, Anthony, do you have anything you want to add before you, we, we end up in, in this webinar? Yeah, so I, I do have a question. Um, someone was asking, uh, like, the difference between EAC productivity apps and Navigate. Can you describe that a little bit? Did you want to maybe jump over to the, the Navigate page there using the icon in the upper right? Sure. Yeah, on, the, uh, on this page here, you can actually access the Navigate apps that are out of the box. Okay, so there's, these this have been out there for a couple of years now, PTC developed these. You have view design files, view drawing, view and measure in 3D, view part structure, view document. And there's also one missing here called view requirements. Okay, these are out of the box apps that PTC developed. And these are, um, you know, purchasable through PTC, through EAC, and, um, this is the, the ones that PTC developed. So what, what EAC did was we took those or took that technology and developed more specific ones for what our customers, we've heard our customers say they wanted to, to, to see. The, most okay, of the so. Navigate apps, the native ones out of the box, they, they only do one thing. So when you were showing us quick access, um, you were able to mash up a whole bunch of different um, data feeds or information streams from ERP, from from PLM, um, the out-of-the-box Navigate ones typically do one thing. So we we built some apps that are possibly more robust uh, than the out-of-the-box solutions. Now, I think the a more fundamental piece of the question is the difference between Navigate and our apps. Um, and I'm going to kind of extrapolate on that question and say um, what Navigate is and why it exists with Windchill. So what Navigate does is allow you to securely access data in the wind chill system and take that information that's securely grabbed out of wind chill and present it for, for specific roles, like Todd mentioned in his opening presentation. Um, so basically it takes uh, a system that if you're not an engineer, someone that lives in the PLM system all the time, can, can seem a little complex and allows you to simplify it for specific roles. And then what we did is took that one step further and took the, the technology around Navigate and the ability to get at the information in, in the PLM system and Windchill and create even more complete applications that really give people instantaneous access to the information they need to do their job. So I hope that answered the question. Todd, did that make sense? Am I, was it confusing? No, <laughs> All right. it was good. Good job. All right. Um, 
I don't have anything else in the queue. Todd, thank you very much for showing this today. Um, if anybody is interested in talking more about the productivity apps and how you might be able to incorporate them into your organization, uh, please reach out. As Todd mentioned, the pricing is very straightforward. Um, there are many complex and confusing things in this world. We did not want the EAC productivity app pricing to be one of those things. So. Um, please reach out. We look forward to talking with you and changing the way your organization accesses its information.